Hey there, uh, I decided to do this one because um, I picked up a few friends while I was I'm here at a at a gospel mission. Um, uh, there's one, two, three, four light workers in here on different that are on various levels of knowledge, if you will. And, and that's cool because we're becoming a, a lot of bright light in here. And that's sort of how it works, right? Magnetic light likes to attract the higher frequency, right? Grow our light spirit body. Uh, so this is actually sort of partly review of things that I've learned while I've been here. Because that's what I do. I share my experiences. I realize my experiences are not going to be the same as everybody else's experiences. And part of that is, is something I was going to describe, which is sort of how it naturally works for me. Okay, so I don't describe, and I can't speak for another unit of consciousness. I can only speak for the experiences that I have based on my soul, my spirit, my state of consciousness. That's all I can do. Okay, I'm not walking in anybody else's shoes. I walk in my own shoes. Okay, so as a footnote to that, I don't allow things to attach themselves to me, okay? And I do not attach myself to something else, which sort of like means I'm my own son, like being a star, okay? Like the star up there. You go up, look up when, this, if, you, if you're any, any place on the planet where the sun is still shining, simply look up there and that would be me, okay? Which means a bright star that is out there pulsing, constantly pulsing, the most powerful energy Okay, so that nobody else in the cosmos is ever going to experience anything less than what love is. Now, I don't know about you, but that was a spiritual pathway that I sought to take so that, one, I would never experience, any, experience anything less than the most powerful energy you can experience to go to the highest state of consciousness you can experience in the cosmos. So you obviously want to learn through the light how to do that because they live in the light. So I mentioned before, I normally work with children because some of these things are very, very basic and simple. Like, hey, I'm aware of myself. I'm looking in the mirror. Why am I here? If you're three or four years old, you got to be asking yourself that. Why am I here? I'm aware of who I am. Now what? Okay, yeah, exactly right. Now what? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Well, I don't know. There's always somebody wanting my energy, always telling me that I got to do this and I got to do that, imposing their will on me. It's like I told a chaplain this morning who is, uh, he's got an enormous amount of scientific background. He leads, a, a, he's a chaplain. He has a community of people that he serves. And I told him flat out because he mentioned about how the governor of the state of Oregon had issued a, a decree that there's going to be a lockdown come, I guess, the 18th. So I said, well, let me say something to everybody in the room. And there was probably 40 people there. And I said, I'll just tell everybody here this is the truth. Now, the governor of this state is going to be in a military prison, okay, for committing war crimes, crimes against humanity, okay? She, and, I, and I just told her the truth. There isn't anybody on this planet that has the right to impose its will on you because that causes trauma. That isn't what love is. That isn't what light is. And that's not what a goddess is. Okay, so that gets back to the most basic question. When you're a child, because I asked a four-year-old girl this a couple of years ago, how would you like to learn through a real goddess? She looked at me and goes, really? I said, yeah, let me introduce you to her. So I took this little four-year-old girl for a walk through nature, introduced her to some flowers, and said, see this little flower here? This flower loves you. That's pretty simple, isn't it? So it doesn't take long to introduce a child to the great living spirit of Mother Earth. And you begin to realize that she can have a spiritual relationship, okay, with a girl on the planet. What it means to have a spiritual communication relationship to that which loves you. Which means everything that she's given you is because she loves you. Okay? And for me, that's not that hard to figure out. I knew that sitting in a high chair at two and a half years of age. Okay, looking at an orange tree. Hey, that's free oranges, and I love orange juice, and it's good for you. That realize, that, then you begin to realize Mother Earth loves you. 
And so then all you have to do is, well, what kind of relationship do you have with this girl? You'd be surprised what you can learn to her because it's her classroom. So it's just like there was a lady that wrote a comment back to me on a video that was put up by Yellow Rose from Texas. I said, well, figure it out. Corona? La Corona? Well, guess what? The Mayans were down there in a place called La Corona. As a matter of fact, a prophecy that was issued 26,000 years ago about the Mayan calendar. And even though Patty Broussard, the commander of the Earth Defense Force, had mentioned how they didn't include the first year, which means really we're talking about 2013, not 2012, okay? But I know that it was in 2017, as I remember it, I believe it was September 23rd, when Patty corrected the grid, okay, out of connectors to zero point, okay, uh, which is free energy, okay, the single source from which all light comes, okay, energy, if you will, because that's all there is. So when you look at the event horizon, or your event, the event you want to experience, what is the energy that you're experiencing when you experience an event or a frame? So um, without going off on a, on a big tree uh, for, the, for the benefit of a couple of guys that I gave my links to, uh, I, I start with childhood. Why are you here? What is it that gives you the greatest meaning and purpose in life? So when I look in the mirror, just like when I say to a lot of people, when, when uh, just like five minutes ago when somebody asked, well, how are you doing? And I said, and I was walking away and I said, hey, be good to yourself. So when you look in the mirror, are you good to yourself? Do you love who you are? And if you don't, how come? Because love is energy. It's a frequency. So if you're not running a high-speed frequency, then how come? Because we'll help you and show you how to do that. I can't do it for you, but those that are light workers and light warriors can show you how to do that. Nutrition alone isn't going to solve the problem. Because when you understand how programs work, a program is a reality. Right? When you, when you use your state of consciousness and the energy that represents what you're experiencing at any one given moment of time, and you're choosing to run an application on Google Play, it's your consciousness that is running that program. It's simply mathematical algorithms in which you're using something that is mathematical in order to perform a function. What is the function? So now we're back to a goddess. Would you prefer to have a relationship with a goddess or a machine? Okay, that's the most basic question that I know. Now me, I'd rather have a relationship with that which is living DNA. Something that is in living light, which is living spirit. Something that can manage an entire biosphere. Imagine that. Imagine a being that is so intelligent, so creative, that it's using its consciousness to manage an entire biosphere upon which we are living in this planet. I don't know about you, but I'd rather learn from that than I would a machine. Because a machine is inorganic. PPAI stands for Parasitic Pathogenic Inor... Excuse me. Pathogenic Parasitic Inorganic Intelligence. It's artificial. It's binary. So just like I told a guy about 30 minutes ago when I told him, listen, because he asked me, where do you get D3 from? Where do you get calcium from? Where do you get ma magnesium from? I get it. I, you know what I said? I get it from her. And the reason for that is simple. She created this. She put this DNA assembly together. This is living DNA, and I'm living spirit. She's living DNA. She's living spirit. Part of her DNA is in my DNA. So when she uses her consciousness to produce something, okay, I want what she's producing in what she created. So there's a relationship in the way that the crystalline structure and the light hits it in this DNA assembly, Okay, it was meant for this DNA assembly because it came from her because this was made from her. So chances are I'm going to get the greatest benefit from that, right? Okay. So therefore, having done that, it makes it a simple equation that when you're doing that, when you are experiencing the living energies that come from consciousness, it is not going to be the same as something that is binary duality, artificial intelligence. If I go into a lab and I say, okay, well, there's ammonium chloride, for example, that's made by the girl on the planet through her state of consciousness, which comes up out of a volcano and becomes a volcanic sublimate. 
and that produces a particular kind of salt in which light hits it and it kicks on a third pole, which is known as the, the uh, engineering department or the factory blueprint for a homo senient sapien. And that means that it's going to error check all of the other two poles to see if any changes were made, edit changes were made. So in other words, it's no different than a bootloader and a PC. That's the third pole. So to kick that on, light has to be able to hit the crystalline structure in the right amounts in order for the LR elements to kick on in order to kick on the third pole. Then all of a sudden, the information kicks on. Remember we're talking about data, data processing? So we're back into data, experiencing the data. So when you experience the data, you are experiencing uh, the universe. Because everything is data, because you can alphanumeric quantify it on the electromagnetic light spectrum that's pulsed, right? So we're talking about pulsed waves of data. So when you realize that you have access to all the data that represents everything that is possible to experience, now you begin to understand what it means to run on no memory. So a man at a unit of consciousness and living spirit comes into this realm and realizes that all of a sudden I'm getting programming language that wants me to experience a reality that I don't want to experience. Then I don't want to give it any energy. I don't want to run any of its data. That's the input side. So it's like, hey, I'm a computer terminal. I got data coming into my terminal. Put up a firewall. How hot are you burning? I'm running pretty hot, so I'll burn that fucking shit up. That's called a mem. Now, that's not the same thing as a memory dump. I've done a lot of memory dumps since I've been here. I did a huge memory dump uh, before I left to the Hawaiian Islands. Because the only way that you're going to be able to come into a program that's parasitic and artificial intelligence and then be able to jump out of it, okay, is, is you have to already know how it operates before you jump into it. So it would be as if you're going to jump into a computer that's got a virus in it. But that's okay. You know how to keep yourself decontaminated, okay, which means you're not going to allow corrupted data to corrupt your DNA, okay, or corrupt the kind of experiences that you would choose to experience. So if you're used to running on no memory, what does that mean? You're using your conscious creative mind to manifest what it is you experience. That means that you are writing and experiencing your own life book, your own storybook, which means you don't have another programmer trying to program what it is you experience. Because I know how to do that. It knows how to do that. But I don't do that. Okay? Because that's infringing upon the right of another artist. And I don't do that. I will share what it is I create with others. And they will create what it is they share with us. So when you're doing that at a high speed, way up there, in the highest state of consciousness you can imagine that you can experience because you love to go fast. You want to go as fast as fast can be. So how do you think you learn how to do that? For me, it starts with the gods. Because I don't know of any more, I don't know of anything in the entire cosmos that has more love than a spiritual mother. Okay? Granted, I have a biological mother. And my, and my biological mother was very much an angel. But there is a spiritual goddess that is in this planet. So I realized when I was a little boy, if I'm going to learn how to go as fast as you can possibly go, like the fastest sperm seed running up the river canal of a girl's birth canal, okay, in order for what? Creation take place. I'm going to learn through a goddess. So if I want to become a god, I'm going to go through a goddess first. Okay? Because I don't know of anything that has more love in their heart to give to something that needs love in order for it to survive than a spiritual mother. So if I want to be a god or a goddess... I want to learn through a powerful goddess. So that would be the girl in Mother Earth, the great living spirit in Mother Earth. Okay? So she's my spiritual mother. Okay? So I'm always in love and service to her. First and foremost, because I'm in her classroom. So when you are out in nature, then you can learn how life unfolds with love. That's what I do with little children. I take them out to show them how life unfolds with love. Because that's what I am, in living spirit. Just like she is. So when you become a reflection in the mirror of what love is, you're there. That means your body is filled with light. And that means your circle of light, which your Merkaba, is spinning off the charts. Now you're not being held captive 
to a programmer. Now you're like in dreamscapes. Which is infinite creative imagination because infinite possibilities are now available to you to experience whatever you want to experience. You're only limited by your own imagination. So they wanted to decouple that. They wanted to shut off the right hemisphere. Okay? They don't want you to experience the most powerful emotions of what love is. What it's like to be in a state of love and joy. What it's like to experience the max amount of light that you can feel within your entire body. In which you have so much love in your heart for everything that is living in spirit. That you realize that you're not supposed to experience anything less than what that is wherever you go in the entire cosmos. When your state of consciousness is where that's at, which means you're able to detect any loss of energy wherever you are at in that cosmos, which means there was a guy that I saw the, not saw the other day, actually I saw him on a video, but I didn't meet him in person. He said something about to the effect that his consciousness could go wherever he wanted to go and then, if you will, jump into whatever unit he needed to jump into or wanted to jump into in order to experience that particular realm. Well, I describe it a little bit differently to me that way, which essentially means when you have so much love in your heart and empathy, if you will, where any loss of energy that you detect, no matter where you go, that causes you to shed tears because you can experience the loss of energy no matter how small it is or how large it is, okay? means that your detectors, your perception is perceiving something on the smallest to the largest level of a loss of energy wherever it happens to be in the entire cosmos because wherever you happen to be, from one dimension to another, anything that is less than what love is or what the most powerful light is, that you are able to detect a loss of electrons in anything in the entire cosmos that is running on electrical power. If you are experiencing any loss of electrical power wherever you are, you will detect it. That's when I realized when I was a child, I'm not supposed to be experiencing any loss of power. Not, for, not only for me, but from anybody else. Where's this electricity being stolen from? And who's stealing it? That was the first question I had when I was four years of age. Who's stealing all of our electrical power? What do you think? A parasite, a big one. So when you realize that the nanovoltmeter range, that a single cell essentially has the ability or the access to 15 million volts. You multiply that by 57 trillion cells. That's an enormous amount of electrical power, isn't it? That means you could create a thunderbolt of your own. That's a Zeus. Okay? Or bigger. So you can create an electrical storm all by yourself, can't you? So now you begin to realize the level of the god and the goddesses that exist in the cosmos that have the capacity to do that because I know how much energy I'm connected with that's capable of doing stuff like that. Now you begin to understand why our particular DNA and those Indians that are full-blooded, okay, that are Gaia shamans and what have you, are an enormous powerhouse of electrical power. The power of the quantum. That makes us a very, very valuable source of DNA. It also makes us a very, very valuable source of electrical power. Because it means we're never going to run out of it. That's right. So that's like a perpetual powerhouse of electricity that's never going to run out of electricity. Because we keep the lights on wherever we go. So that's one of the reasons why there's so much light in here right now. Okay? Is to anchor the 5D consciousness timeline. Okay? Which is why I knew a number of years ago when I began realizing that you don't want to lose nobody. You don't want to lose nobody. Otherwise, it's extremely painful. So then you have to sort what I call the rest of the field, the rest of the herd. Right? So how many go with us? Right? And, and then you have to deal with the fact that, well, this is a classroom. And class was dismissed in 2013. Okay? Now the, the grid got fixed. The blocks are down. 
essentially means, as Patty once said to us, that, hey, anybody wants to go home can go home, okay? And now you begin to realize everything that's happening right now between the election and Trump and how many groups are beginning to form who are being attracted to each other because they want to separate from those that are imposing their will on us, those that are feeding on our energy. You know, this is the difference between the energetic vampires and those that live in love and service to others, right? That have an enormous amount of energy 